Thank you again for attending this presentation as well. But uh, so here uh, we're actually looking at a um, now a different domain. This is now natural gas. However, we're looking at a very similar problem as we looked at before on underground cables. So in this case, we're also going to be actually uh, developing microfabricated sensors that are going to be used to perform diagnostics and potentially fault prevention of these underground um, uh, or these natural gas pipelines. Um, now, um, this is a much newer project, so we're not as far along as, as in the previous one, but still we have some very interesting things to show you. Um, we're basically looking at two techniques of, um, um, of essentially uh, preventing faults and uh, doing diagnostics of, of natural gas pipelines. One is through a set of um, distributed wireless uh, sensor networks, so uh, uh, sensors that can monitor pressure, flow, vibrations, and that are uh, either placed on top of or actually inside natural gas pipelines. And then when there is uh, you know, a, a fault event, they can actually trigger an alarm um, and then notify uh, a control center about uh, anomalies. And then the other thing is looking at uh, using novel uh, non-contact uh, laser ultrasonic techniques to actually detect cracks uh, during the inspection of, um, of these uh, underground pipelines. So we'll, we'll actually talk about both of those techniques. And, and again, um, as was the case with the underground cables, um, the direction here was again motivated uh, by, uh, by our project advisor committee who felt uh, some of these things I'll be showing you here are uh, um, uh, crucial to pursue. So uh, there are only three components to our system that we're developing. Uh, we're developing, uh, as I mentioned before, these low-cost MEMS sensors to measure pressure flow um, and vibrations. Uh, we're building a low-power uh, wireless mesh network that actually can talk to these sensors. Uh, ultimately, these sensors will want to be self-powered um, and then deployed throughout the, uh, the pipelines, so actually instrument the pipelines. Again, the key here is low cost uh, because the current uh, instrumentation out there is actually very expensive. We would like to reduce the cost by at least a factor of 100. Um, and then uh, the laser uh, ultrasonic methods for uh, doing actually diagnostics on the individual uh, components of the pipelines and also some interesting flow measurement techniques. Um, just going a little bit deeper into here, uh, where we look, uh, with respect to the, uh, the sensors, we're actually microfabricating some of these things here in-house. Um, uh, again, here in Citrus, we're very fortunate to have the uh, uh, Marvel nanofabrication facility, which actually allows us to create some of these uh, interesting sensors. As you can hear, you can actually see some of the pictures of the sensors we fabricated. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a pressure sensor. I'll go a little bit more into detail later on how they work. Uh, and these are some flow sensors. This is, we haven't actually fabricated this yet, but this is the design we're shooting for. Um, and basic to, uh, to be able to instrument uh, these pipelines at a very low cost through this distributed MEMS uh, sensor network. Uh, the radios um, uh, are a crucial component of the system and specifically, you know, how are we able to get the information from these sensors at a very low, uh, low cost of power, right? Because we'd like to deploy these sensors and have them actually be there in place to do the continuous monitoring of, of these events um, that might happen. And so uh, we're actually building on some research that's also done here, both at Citrus and BSAC, on low power radios. Uh, we're using several, um, radio architectures. We're not actually developing the radios ourselves here. We're actually using uh, radios that are being developed by, by other researchers through collaboration. Uh, and so one of the primary radios we're going to be using is the Dust Networks radio here. And, and you can actually see some, uh, some images of the network here. The nice thing with these radios are uh, that they are very low power and then allow continuous operation for extended duration of time. Um, and then for the uh, laser ultrasonics and flow testing, um, I know uh, Professor Dick White will go into this later, but basically uh, the idea there is that we can use lasers and ultrasonic techniques to uh, measure both the, um, uh, the defects or look for defects in the 
in the pipeline walls, uh, from, for example, crawlers that are crawling through the pipelines. So inspect welds and, and things like that. But also use ultrasonic techniques to, to provide a very non-intrusive way of measuring the flow within the pipeline. Um, and that allows for a very low cost, uh, uh, essentially flow metering, um, uh, measuring the flows within the, uh, the pipeline, which is something that's also of the interest to, um, to the gas uh, utilities. Uh, this is uh, a view of the basic component that will actually be uh, deploying uh, through a pilot study that's going to happen in the spring. Um, and basically, uh, this is our, the pipeline. Here we have a gas flow. We're looking at transmission um, gas pipelines. And basically, uh, what we're doing is we're uh, deploying this MEM sensors. Now, ultimately, these packages actually will be dropped into the pipeline. Um, but for now, we're actually going to be deploying them using a probe um, that's inserted into the gas flow. And so this sensor package then contains both pressure, flow, and vibration sensors. And then we have radios that are being attached to this access port. And so this access port actually are um, um, uh, access ports that uh, are very common. Uh, it's, it's about a four inch, uh, sorry, um, uh, three quarters inch, um, uh, it's a tapped, uh, essentially access port that is, is very common throughout the, uh, the valve stations on these, these pipelines. Um, that allows us actually access to insides of, of, the, of the pipeline and then attached to a, uh, a radio that then talks to a network manager. And so at each of the, um, uh, the gas um, uh, valve station, we actually can instrument um, essentially through, during this pilot study to deploy a package like this at multiple locations to measure the flow and, um, and um, vibration and pressure. Uh, ultimately, uh, our goal is to actually deploy these sensors and then have a distributed network that actually self-distributes itself through the pipeline. So the idea is now that the probe is actually an antenna and then we drop these sensors down into the pipeline. They follow the gas flow and then actually create a network of nodes that can then instrument the pipeline between the valve stations as well. So, you know, that this is the pilot study. This is where we're going to test the radios and our sensors. But then ultimately, we would like to have a system that actually allows us to instrument the entire pipeline. Uh, these sensors have to be self-powered and uh, inexpensive enough that they can then be uh, essentially sacrificial, such that during a pigging operation, they can be flushed out and then redeployed when needed. So that's essentially our goal. Uh, I already mentioned some of the sensors we're developing here. These are the ones we're actually building here in-house. We're using a set of off-the-shelf sensors that we're adding to the sensor package as well, and then actually uh, developing or using off-the-shelf components for the laser ultrasonic testing also. Um, this is just an image of our MEMS pressure sensor. These are capacitive sensors. This is the second generation of the design. And basically, the way they work, it's a diaphragm. Uh, when, the when the pressure uh, pushes on this diaphragm, this uh, plate here deflects, changes the capacitance between this plate and the bottom here. And we can actually measure the, uh, the change in capacitance and hence measure the change in the pressure. The novel thing which we're actually bringing to the table here is that we actually have now fields and arrays of these sensors to increase sensitivity while still keep the low power uh, budget down. Uh, this is the flow sensors. Um, um, and we're actually using a, a somewhat novel flow sensor concept where we actually have microfabricated structures that deflect uh, as a function of the dynamic pressure. This is something that's not usually done during, uh, during flow testing. Usually flow testing is done using a thermopile, so a heater, and you actually measure the heat flux on both sides. However, uh, we don't really want to put a heating filament into a, a natural gas pipeline. So uh, we're actually developing this, um, well, developing these mechanical structures or whiskers, as you can see here, that will deflect based on the pressure. And that allows us then to measure the dynamic pressure and hence the flow within the pipeline at a very low cost. And so this is something that the utilities feel they actually uh, uh, very much need. Um, and this is just the next steps of, uh, of the, those sensors. So essentially, we're looking at a second generation fabrication of some of our pressure sensors, um, as well as the flow sensors. 
And then, as I mentioned before, the goal really of this project, which is, uh, as I mentioned, very new, is to do a um, deployment in collaboration with the utilities to test some of these sensors and see how they actually perform uh, in the um, natural gas environment. So I think, and now I'm going to again pass uh, the podium over to Professor Dick White, uh, who will talk about laser ultrasonic uh, inspection. Thanks, Igor. Um, yeah, the, um, as he said, there's a, a way of measuring, uh, for example, the quality of wells that are made in these pipelines that are put together with, uh, with plates. Uh, <clears throat> and there's a company that, uh, in Southern California that, that makes uh, these ultrasonic uh, measuring systems using lasers to generate, first of all, generate um, a, uh, an ultrasonic wave in a plate. If you, if you have a pulse laser that, uh, whose light uh, hits a piece of metal, it will uh, ever so slightly heat up the, uh, the metal and the thermal expansion that's involved there will cause an ultrasonic wave to be created and then that wave will propagate, let's say, into the, the let's say you do this inside of the gas pipe, it'll propagate in the wall and go on, hit the outside of the wall, it'll bounce off of the outside of the wall <coughs> and any uh, voids that might be in the, in the well. So you can get information about well, you know, the thickness of the pipe, about bad wells and so forth. Um, <clears throat> so this was a couple, I'm going to just describe a couple of experiments that we've done. Uh, these pipe uh, lines are, the pipes are very big. The one that uh, exploded in San Bruno was 30 inches in diameter. They're three <coughs> eighths of an inch thick, steel. So, <clears throat> and we were unable to get hold of any of those samples uh, because they're, uh, uh, they're evidence in the, they may be evidence in the, uh, proceedings, legal proceedings about that explosion. So we made up a couple of, of uh, pieces here. I, I went to a machine shop and told them I wanted them to do a job that they've probably never been asked to do before, not, namely make a bad weld. And so they thought they could, they could manage that. So they made a weld here, a couple of pieces. This is uh, about three or four inches on the side. And there's a weld, the solid on the other side, and then there's a gap on this side. And so we took this to the uh, laser ultrasonic system. Uh, what they do is generate uh, ultrasonic waves with one pulse, and that's, that'll be this pulse. It scans down this way. And then they have a detection laser that looks at the motion. It's interferometr interferometrically uh, uh, instrumented so that it can measure the displacement of this plate when the waves bounce back. And we did two, two tests, one where the generation and detection laser were on the same side where there's just solid metal in between. On the other test, we put the generation laser on one side of the gap and partial gap and detection laser on the other side. So we wouldn't expect that the ultrasonic uh, pulse could, could get across this gap. So the next slide shows the kinds of uh, of data you get out of there. <clears throat> I have to explain this a little bit. This is what's called a B scan, and what it shows is the detected signal as a function of time after the pulse was sent in and a function of location along the, the plate. And so in this case, where these are on the same side, you see we get a reflection coming back, uh, a, a direct signal coming back because they could go from this generation laser to the detection laser. So you see that looked good. On this side, there was the gap and no signal came back. So this is just a, a very simple explanation of, of how the system would work. Um, just to get an idea of the sensitivity, in terms of measuring the thickness of a pipe, uh, these, uh, they've shown, and other, other people as well have shown that using this technique, you can get uh, thickness measurements with an error of just one or two percent. Uh, you can also use this technique to look at stress corrosion cracks, and it has, since it has a very fine uh, spatial resolution, you can look at these cracks, measure the depth, and so forth uh, at very high uh, resolution. And again, this is something that people who have gas pipelines would, would like to know about. Uh, the next slide just shows another uh, sample that we made. 
This is supposed to represent a joint between two pieces of pipe where they didn't do a good job of, of aligning the pipes. And again, you get, uh, using the ultrasonic technique, you can get a lot of information about it. Okay, the next slide uh, is uh, a single slide that talks about uh, this ultrasonic gas flow uh, measurement technique. Uh, it turns out that we've been very fortunate in that there are some people who've been looking at a microfabricated uh, ultrasonic array uh, here in, in, uh, in BSAC, and they have been very interested also in the possibility of using this to measure uh, flow rates and gas uh, pipelines. And we came in and said, well, we have an idea. And so they've been very kind and have let us kind of move into their lab and use the equipment they had built over the years and so forth. So the idea is <coughs> here that uh, they put together a microfabricated array of uh, piezoelectric dots, if you will. Uh, each of these dots, and I think there are 37 of them in there, has a piezoelectric um, uh, film on it, and if you put a voltage on there, you can generate uh, ultrasonic waves. If you have an ultrasonic wave coming in, <coughs> it will generate a voltage at that spot. You can phase these so that you can make phased arrays. You can change the phasing so you can scan the beam and so forth. And <coughs> its size, just point out, it's six and a half millimeters on the side, so it would be possible to put these types of devices in the little side branches, the little pipes that, that Igor just mentioned. And <clears throat> uh, we have some schemes for measuring the flow rate of the gas. Uh, to show that this works, this is a grad student, uh, Richie Prispola, who uh, is shown here. This is an optical photograph, but what he was doing was holding up his hands, and so you look at the returns from the uh, scanning array that was illuminating him. Uh, this is from that hand, it's very close to the camera. This is from his head further back, and this is from his other hand. So it does show that the scheme works uh, in a gas and so forth. Um, <clears throat> I think the next slide, is there one more? Oh, okay. Um, so what we intend to do is, is go ahead in the interaction with the laser ultrasonic folks and looking at, at the uh, uh, that as a, as a way of measuring the uh, 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 faults, looking for faults in these pipes. And then we want to go ahead with this ultrasonic flow sensor. We've done some additional experiments that I haven't shown here. We have a, an airflow tube, um, a small pipeline, just the air, six feet long, six inches in diameter, and we've put some of these uh, array, microfabricated array sensors in there measuring uh, flow velocity, we have a fan and so forth. And we've also shown that we can bounce that off the bottom of the, the pipe. So I believe that one thing that can come from that is a flow measurement system which involves just uh, one uh, point, uh, one transducer where we do a, uh, a reflection and look at, at uh, the returning signal with that transducer and from that can determine the, the flow velocity. So uh, I guess I think that's all we uh, had to say on this. So again, if you have any questions, we'd be happy to, to hear them. Okay. Thanks again, Dick and Igor. And we have roughly two minutes for questions. <laughs> if I run faster, it'd be more, more questions. Thank you, Damon. Um, I'm wondering how the diagnostics for the welds um, relate to anything that's being used in the nuclear industry. Because as I saw, um, you know, the, the picture of the bad weld, I was thinking one might have occasion to want to look at welds in reactor pressure vessels or steam generators. Are there applications there? I, I think there could be, yeah. yeah. Um, incidentally, I was told that in the pipe that did explode, the weld was inspected by a man who crawled on his knees uh, the length of the, of the pipe, but didn't look up because he was worried about cutting his knees. So that was an inspe an <clears throat> a visual inspection that might have, uh, might have discovered something. But yes, I think it could have other, other applications. So.
So I'm thinking you get these 57,000 miles of distribution and you have it all instrumented going ahead in the future, and you probably find a lot of water trees all over the place. Would you need to develop some automated system for detecting which ones mattered and which ones didn't? So now you're talking about the distribution. Uh, yeah, I know, but it's the same principle here. Once you've instrumented the whole thing, you find lots of pieces of almost of problems, right. but only some result in failures. Right. And how do you make that distinction in some automated way that other than human beings looking at all this data all the time? Yeah. Or, I mean, or is it human beings looking at all the data? Well, I mean, that's, that's a very good question. Right? So there's, there's a couple of things here. With, I guess the distinction between natural gas pipelines and the underground cables is in natural gas pipelines, if you detect a catastrophic event that's happening on the pipeline, you can act, right? For example, I mean, I mean, right now there is, there's still the problem of instrumentation, so things might happen without the utilities knowing about it, right? Uh, one of the things when we talk to our project advisory committee, what they're really concerned about is if you have a valve station, having, for example, uh, a collision, you know, a car that gets out of control and slams into that valve station, right, and all of a sudden you have a rapture. How do you detect that? So this is, for example, where the vibration sensors will come in. So, so I guess one thing would be sort of preventive, you know, continuous maintenance and testing. But one thing would be, okay, something is happening on the line. How can you isolate it and to make sure that it doesn't, you know, propagate um, going forward? For the underground cables, that's more sort of a long-term diagnostics, right? Where we're looking at slow degradation of the cables, and at some point we say, okay, now look, they're below a certain threshold. And so with that case, uh, I actually in both cases, this is an active area of research. I, I agree. I mean, there would be... Um, um, there, uh, you know, would be a lot of work on sort of algorithms and finding out, okay, now how, how do you actually process that data? How do you make that decision? Um, I know that there is some work on looking at uh, using actually vibration information, uh, although not as granular as we're proposing here for natural gas pipelines, to look at faults. So, for example, if there's a fault further down the line, how does the vibration, you know, propagate through the, the pipeline? So, you know, I think what we do here is provide infrastructure for sort of continuous research on how, okay, now, great, you have this information, now how do you process it, what do you do with it? So, I, I think the buzzword is condition-based maintenance. And if, if the utilities find uh, something that doesn't look good, they're uh, going to shut down that part of the line and, uh, and get in there and see how bad it is and replace it and so on, if need be. 